morning and welcome to the Volunteer Voice. On the Volunteer Voice today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Chris Wilson, who is the Director of Advancement and Volunteer Services for Hospice of the Chesapeake. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad to have you tell us, the Director of Advancement and Volunteer Services. Um, first of all, tell us what is Hospice of the Chesapeake? I think most people might know, but um, what who are you and what do you do there? So Hospice of the Chesapeake really cares for individuals throughout the journey with illness and loss in our community. And we've been serving our community for over 40 years. So we're very proud of that. Yeah. Um, I know, um, as I said, I think that most of our listeners are probably familiar with your organization. We know that you all uh, do support families at a very critical time. Absolutely. Um, sort of in their lives. So you are here today to talk with us about your volunteer needs. How do you all... How, how important are volunteers to your organization? So volunteers are critical to our organization and actually they're mandated um, under the oh. Medicare law. We are required to have 5% of our staff uh, served through the volunteers oh, that we, we have. Yeah, so it's they're critical to our, our mission. Okay, what kinds of things do volunteers do? So they do everything from administrative work in the office to patient care, which is really providing support to uh, patients and families, uh -huh. um, to honoring our veterans, uh -huh. um, and healing arts, which is what I'd really like to highlight and talk about today. That sounds great. So what does that mean, Healing Arts? So Healing Arts program really is about complementary therapeutic uh, programs such as Comfort Touch and Reiki and aromatherapy. And the really great thing about our Healing Arts program is even if someone has an interest in some of these modalities, but they don't necessarily have the formal training, we have the experts and the staff that can help train them to be able to go out and do this with our patients and families and support them in that manner. That, um... I love that. So you mean you have folks who have sort of artistic gifts that come in and work with patients or families sort of Correct. along this path? What's an example of someone were um, a photographer, say, or how, how could someone like that contribute? Well, so how about uh, photography? Definitely we could do um, memory making, capture that kind of mm. thing with photography, if you will. Um, also musicians, that's one of the areas of uh. great need that we're getting more and more requests for. Um, so people who may have the gift of voice um, or the gift of playing an instrument so that they would go in even informally to play at the bedside or in one of our inpatient care centers. Also, people who are trained therapeutic musicians who really have that um, knowledge about how to intentionally create an environment that helps relax and ease pain and symptoms and anxiety. We are looking for all of those types of individuals. So that, I think, is great because when you, you know, probably think about um, volunteer service at a place that has to do sort of w w with um, sort of medical issues and health, you would think that you would need a different kind of skill set, but the fact that you're looking for people who are talented um, artists or want to be artists, I think is great. Absolutely. So talk with us about the training. You said if someone has an interest in some of these areas that you would provide training. Absolutely. So um, in the different modalities that we offer, aromatherapy, comfort touch, Reiki, um, Several times throughout the year, we will have sessions where people can come in and learn more and actually be trained in those modalities. Um, all of our volunteers, I should say, have to go through a, um, a general training and onboarding process. Um, so they would have to do that as well, which is really an online training that they can do as a self-paced mm -hmm. um, um, training that they can do on their own. Okay. And then they would come in and do one of these maybe special modalities that they have an interest in supporting families. So actually, let me ask that. So if folks um, might have thought about volunteering for hospice years ago, I know that there was a lot of time they had to take. They needed to come and, and be present for an in-person training that sometimes was several weekends in a row. So Correct. what I understand you saying is that that can be done online now? It's all online now. So it's a self-paced uh, module that you can do at your own pace. Um, does take about, uh, about uh, two days to complete really if you sit down and really dig into it but it's at your own pace so you can do it over weeks uh, whatever works for your schedule okay so if um, folks are interested in um, just knowing more about this or learning about what your volunteer opportunities are where can they start for more information sure I'd say first of all I'd encourage them to call in they can call 410-987-2003 and speak to someone in the volunteer team just to learn more about the various ways they can also 
visit our website at hospicechesapeake.org um, and look at the volunteer opportunities. They can also email us through that module as well through the website to learn more. Okay. And Chris, you and I were chatting before um, we came in the room, and I know that you've been with hospice for about 12 years. Yes, so I have. It's a phenomenal organization. If someone's thinking about it, what, what is it about hospice that's so special, and why should someone give you a call? I think the thing that is so special about hospice is that we are with people at one of the most difficult points in their life and yet it is most one of the most beautiful points of you know being able to help others out in our community yeah boy that sounds like a phenomenal opportunity um, for those of you who are listening I encourage you to reach out to hospice of the Chesapeake they're doing incredible work if you just think that this is something that might be interesting to you don't hesitate to give them a call reach out um, check it out and see if it's a right fit for you in terms of a volunteer opportunity thank you Chris Thank you so much. Okay, and you can find podcasts of last week's episode of this show, in addition to other great content, in the on-demand section at 1430wnav.com. Thank you uh, again to Chris for joining me today, and thank you for listening to The Volunteer Voice on your hometown station, 1430 WNAV.